from the moment I saw that Crusader team go onto the field, I wanted to be a part of it. I just something just clicked inside of me, and I could hardly wait to get through uh, grade eight and get into grade nine. St. Paul's had its modest beginnings in 1926 on Selkirk Avenue. In 1931, the school moved to the corner of Ellis and Vaughn, and Crusader football was born. However, the early years of Crusader football were anything but humble. In the first 21 seasons, the Crusaders captured 15 league titles and five provincial championships. Much of the success of the early program is due to Eddie Cass, who was hired as the school's first director of athletics in 1931. As a student at Fordham University in New York, he had witnessed the rise of college football and wanted to bring that spirit and enthusiasm to St. Paul's. In 1931, Eddie Cass co-founded the Manitoba School's Rugby Football League and with it, the Crusaders football team. Several Crusader traditions were born in 1931. Stephen Shiska was the first of many players who subsequently returned to the school to coach the Crusaders. Percy Daigle was the first of many players who went on to play professional football. In fact, over 25 Crusader alumni have played with the Blue Bombers alone. Patrick Benson, a fullback on the 1931 team, was the first of many Crusaders to witness his sons play Crusader football. Emphasis on academics and the Jesuit development of the whole person made Crusader football players highly competitive for college entrance scholarships across North America. These traditions, promoted by Eddie Cass, of returning service to the team, pursuing academic and athletic excellence, and passing the Crusader spirit from generation to generation, are as much key elements of Crusader football today as they were in 1931. Eddie Cass recruited future CFL Hall of Fame member Greg Cabot, who between 1933 and 1940 led the Crusaders to six league titles and the 1938 and 1939 provincial championship. Sports writer Vince Lee was an early fan of high school football and in particular the Crusader spirit. In a Winnipeg Tribune column, he chronicled the 12 greatest Crusaders. Unfortunately, several of these football stars, some not yet out of their teens, perished in the war. Among them was Ernie Devlin. For many years after the war, his parents presented the Ernie Devlin Memorial Trophy to the Crusader that achieves the best combination of scholastic standing and football ability. In the war and post-war years, the Crusaders won six straight MSRL championships and took the provincial titles in 1942, 45, and 49. In 1949, alumni coaches Larry Desjardins and George Dupre celebrated victory with the Crusader players by marching through the streets from the Osborne Stadium to St. Paul's College at Ellison Vaughan. Certainly neither them nor anyone in the crowd would have guessed that it would be another 33 years before the Crusaders would once again be provincial champions. The 1950s was a difficult decade for football at St. Paul's, but the Crusaders' spirit lived on. The polio epidemic of 1953 canceled the season, and that same year the MSRL started by Eddie Cass collapsed. After years of trying to join the Winnipeg City League, St. Paul's was allowed to enter the City League in 1954. However, there was a catch. Grade 12 students at St. Paul's were considered college students because they were registered as part of St. Paul's College rather than the high school. Therefore, they were not allowed to play in the City League. Despite this substantial disadvantage, the team managed to make it to some semifinals during the 1950s, but some years were rougher than others. Head coach Torchy Peckett summed up his rookie 1956 Crusader team by declaring that most of these boys think that a tackle is something you use to catch fish. If we get three first downs this season, Father Ryan says I can keep the job. With a hint of optimism, Peckett noted that his team was an eager bunch and they've got a great tradition to uphold. High school football met another challenge in 1957 when school trustees called for its cancellation due to financial constraints. Fortunately, public outcry saved high school football. Even though those years had their difficult moments, by 1958, Director of Athletics Father Barry Connolly had more than 175 students playing either Crusader or intramural football, more than 50% of the undergraduate students. In 1954, the City High School Football League introduced the Harry Hood Trophy. Echoing the criteria of St. Paul's own Ernie Devlin Trophy, 
The hood is awarded annually and is the most coveted individual trophy in the Winnipeg High School Football League. Ten Crusaders have won the award through the years. Through the mid-1960s, coaches such as Kip McFadden, Torchy Peckett, Pete Sawchuck, and Mel Wilson inspired a remarkable number of Crusader players to return as future head coaches. Jerry Bolin, Dennis Meach, Len Sitter, George Dawson, Nick LePing, and Jim Ladd would all return to lead Crusader teams. It was also during these years that the Jesuits began to play a more direct role in the Crusader team. Fathers Barry Connolly, Aloysius Shretlin, and Clemens Cambites would contribute as coaches or directors of athletics. In 1964, a new era of Crusader football began, coinciding with the school's transfer to its present location on Grant Avenue. While the history and spirit established at Ellis and Vaughn were not left behind, the cinder ashes of the old field were. By then, St. Paul's was finally allowed to play their grade 12 students, and they reached the 1964 championship game. Even though they lost, now that the Crusaders could use their senior players, the underdog era was declared over. The 1975 season marked the first time since joining the City League that the Crusaders finished number one after regular season play. This experience of winning a league pennant was another major step toward ending the championship drought. The Crusaders went to the finals in 1980 and 81 and came home empty-handed, but St. Paul's was now knocking on the door of another championship title. Thank you very much, Cass. I accept this in front of everybody. Finally, after battling for 33 years, the 1982 team brought home the trophy the school had coveted for so long. The memory of Len Sitter, the longest serving head coach, clutching the 1982 championship trophy, grinning ear to ear, and sharing the victory with Father John Holland, the longest serving Jesuit at St. Paul's, are forever etched in the minds of many Crusaders. From 1954 until 1975, the preseason question was often to be whether the team would be competitive, not whether it would challenge for the title. With the 1975 pennant and the 1982 provincial championship, the new question was, how far can we go this year? In the 23 years following the 1982 championship, the Crusaders made it to 11 provincial championship games and missed the playoffs only once. The 1999 championship season was almost perfect, losing only an exhibition game. Interestingly, the grade 12s on this championship team were born in 1982. Yes, 1982 was indeed a good year. In recent years, the football program at St. Paul's has expanded considerably. In 2001, a second Crusader football team was created, and this development has increased the number of students who can benefit from being part of the Crusader program. These teams have been led by head coaches Mike Watson, Bob Lewin, Stacy Daynard, and Peter Pura. Many alumni and volunteer coaches make up the core of the program and continue to pass on the tradition of excellence started in 1931. Every year since 1999, St. Paul's has invaded the Winnipeg Stadium to watch a Crusader team in a championship game. Titles were brought home in 1999, 2003, 2004, and 2005. The 2005 Provincial Champion Crusaders recorded a perfect season with no losses and a total of only 15 points scored against them in regular season play. At St. Paul, students are taught to be men for others. Those fortunate enough to play on a Crusader football team have a great opportunity to live this motto. Crusaders play not for themselves, but for each other, and for those who have played before them, and for those that will wear their numbers in the years to come. Lessons learned on the football field, sometimes written in blood, have guided hundreds of men through life who proudly call themselves Crusader alumni. Many have formed lifelong friendships with fellow Crusaders who share common values of commitment, determination, and above all, to ensure their actions in life as they were on the field are at Maorum de Gloriam for the greater glory of God. In 1972, a dinner was held in honor of Mr. Eddie Cass when his old friend and then Archbishop of Toronto, Philip Pocock, addressed the 700 assembled. He said, I don't think Eddie Cass ever hated anyone, and I don't think anyone ever hated him. Eddie's middle name should have been Love, because the man who loves is the man who gives, and Eddie has given much of himself. The man who gives is the man who is remembered.
game begins, the Crusaders kick off the ball. On behalf of Crusaders fans everywhere, thanks for joining us and see you at the next game.